So what is jealousy? Is it a moral issue? Or is there something wrong with your brain? The way we look at it is that at least some forms of jealousy could be, if you will, pathological. And in that case, it's something wrong with your brain. The brain sort of gets fixated on a certain object or person and wants to be attached. And if it feels a loss or a threat to that, it reacts with emotions. And it's almost involuntary. And people can become fixated, like in relationships. This classical one is when it leads to stalking, because the person who is attached believes that there's great loss is going to occur. It's almost like a form of OCD, if you will, where you're obsessed about someone, you're attached to someone. If that's threatened, you feel you'll be annihilated. So from the perspective of someone who's jealous, they actually are acting on a brain circuit that has learned to actually possess something and in a way which is wrong. My piece of advice for any up-and-coming psychopharmacologist is to balance neurobiological empowerment with listening so that you can actually be informed as a modern scientist of disease actions, what's wrong with the brain, drug actions, how they work, with the ability to actually empathize and listen and use common sense. Another shorthand way of saying that, let's combine the art with the science and make the best clinician. If you have two people sitting in front of you that are depressed, you can't tell whether one is bipolar depressed or the other unipolar depressed just by looking at their current symptoms. You have to maybe do two things. One is called, where's your mama and who's your daddy? What do I mean by that? Who's your daddy means maybe what's the family history? What is the background? If there's other people with known mania and bipolar, that's a very good hint that the person in front of you may be bipolar. And where's your mama? Sometimes that means let's go find somebody else in your life, often a woman, who can give me a better history than you're giving because sometimes uh, people deny their mania whereas they actually emphasize their depression and an outside observer can sometimes help you. So family history and uh, current history by an outside observer are two of the key ways of distinguishing unipolar from bipolar depression. I've been critical of how the U.S. government and military have been dealing with PTSD, so much so that in addition to writing this in textbooks and articles, I've even written a novel, Shell Shock. So why did I do that? I want to bring into consciousness the fact that we need to do more work on preventing and finding early interventions in this disorder, not waiting until people, particularly with combat-related PTSD, are months and years after they've established this illness. The sweet spot of intervention could very well be on the battlefield. So I'd like to raise consciousness about the focus and trying to sh pivot the focus of the military from blast injuries to PTSD and to do it shortly after exposure to the trauma, not years later.